The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE. The leader in live and emerging tech coverage, as you well know, we are live at MWC 23 in Barcelona, Spain. Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. Day three of our coverage, as you know, because you've been watching the first two days, a lot of conversations about ecosystem, a lot about disruption in the telco industry. We're going to be talking about Open RAN. You've heard some of those great conversations, the complexities, the opportunities. Two guests joined Dave and me, Abdullah Abu Zaid, technical product manager at Dell, and Gil Hellman, VP Telecom Solutions Engineering and Architecture at Wind River. Welcome to the program, guys. Thank you. Nice Thanks. to be here. Let's talk a little bit about Dale and Wind River. We'll each ask you both the same question and talk to us about how you're working together to really address the complexities that organizations are having when they're considering moving from a closed environment to an open environment. Definitely, thank you for hosting us. By end of the day, the relationship between Dell and Wind River is not new. We've been collaborating in the open ecosystem for long and time enough. And that's one of the, our partnership is a result of this collaboration where we've been trying to make more efficient operation in the ecosystem. The open environment ecosystem, it has the plus and the concern, the plus of uh, simplicity, the choice of multiple vendors, and then the concern of complexity managing these vendors. Especially if we look at example for the open run ecosystem, dealing with multiple vendors, trying to align them, it brings a lot of operational complexity and TCO challenges for our customers. From this outcome where we build our partnership with Wind River in order to help our customer to simplify all around deployment, operation, and life cycle management and sustain it. And who are the customers, by the way? Mainly the CSP yep. customers who are targeting open RAN and virtual RAN deployments. That digital transformation moving towards unified cloud environment or a seamless cloud experience from core to RAN. These are the customers we are working with them. You'll give us your perspective, your thoughts on the partnership and the capabilities that you're enabling the CSPs with Sure. Uh, it's actually started last year here in Barcelona when we sat together and started to look at the, you know, the industry the adoption of Open Run and the challenges. And Open Run brings a lot of uh, possibilities and benefit, but it does bring a lot of challenges of reintegrating what you disaggregate. Okay, in the past you purchase everything from one vendor, they provide the whole solution. Now you open it, you have different layers. So if you're looking at Open Run, you have, I like to look at it as three major layers, the management, the application, and the infrastructure. And we're starting to look what are the challenges and the challenges of integration of complexity knowledge that operator has with cloud infrastructure. And this is where we basically Dell and Windriver set together and say, how can we ease this? How we can make it simpler? And we decided to partner and bring a joint infrastructure solution to market that's not only integrated at the lab, at the factory level, but it basically comes with complete life cycle management from the day zero deployment to the day two operation. Everything done through one location, through Dell supported, working out of the box. So basically taking this whole infrastructure layer uh, integration pain out, de-risking everything, and then continuing from there to work with the ecosystem vendor to pre-integrate, validate the application on top of this infrastructure. So what is the, what is the Wind River secret sauce in this, in this mix for folks who aren't familiar with what Wind River does? Yes, absolutely. So Wind River, for many, many don't know, uh, we're in business since 1981, so over 40 years. We specialize in high performance, high reliability infrastructure. We touch every aspect of your day, uh, your life from the airplane that you fly, the cars, the medical equipment, and if we go into the telco, most of the telco equipment that it's not uh, virtualized, not cloudified today, using our operating system. So from all the leading equipment manufacturers and even the smaller one, and as the world started to go into disaggregation in cloud, Wind River started to look at this and say, okay, and everything is evolving. Instead of a device that included the application, the hardware, everything fused together, it's now being decomposed. So instead of providing the operating environment 
to develop and deploy the application to the device manufacturer, now we're providing it basically to build the cloud. So to oversimplify it, I call it a cloud OS. Okay, it's a lot more than OS, it's an operating environment, but we took basically our experience, the same experience that you know, we used in all those years uh, with the telco equipment manufacturer and brought it into the cloud. So we're basically providing solution to build an on-premises scalable cloud from the core all the way to the far edge that doesn't compromise reliability, doesn't compromise performance, and address all the telco needs. So, I, I, Abdullah, maybe you can answer yeah. this. Um, what, is the, what does the go-to-market motion look like, uh, considering that you have two separate companies that can address customers directly, separately, what, 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 is that, what does that look like? If you're approaching a possible customer, who is, who's knocking on the door? How, how, how does that work? Uh, exactly, and this effort is a Dell uh, turnkey service offering, or solution offering to our customers, where Dell, in collaboration with Wind River, we proactively validate, integrate, and productize the solution as engineered system knock door on our customers who are trying to transform to open run or open ecosystem, we can help you to go through that seamless experience by pre-validating with whatever workload you want to introduce, enable zero touch provisioning and during the day one deployment and ensure we have sustainable life cycle management throughout the life cycle of the product in, in, opera, in operational network as well as having a unified single call of support from Dell side. Okay, so I was just going to ask you about support. So I'm a CSP, I have the solution, I go to Dell for support. Exactly. Okay. So start with Dell and level one, level two, and if there are complex issues related to the co cloud code itself, then Wind River will be on our back supporting us. Talk a little bit about a, cust a CSP example that is, is using the technology and some of the outcomes that they're able to achieve. I'd love to get both of your perspectives on that. Vodafone is the great yeah. example. We're here yeah. in Barcelona. Vodafone is the first OR network in Europe and it's using our joint solution. What are some of the, the outcomes that it's helping them to achieve? Faster time to market. You Thank can you. see they already started to deploy the OR in commercial network. Uh, very successful in the trials that they did last year. Uh, we're also not uh, stopping there. We're evolving, working with them together to improve like stuff around energy efficiency. So continue to optimize, so the outcome it's just simplifying it and you know ready to go. Using experience that we have, Wind River is, in, is powering the first uh, basically virtualized RAN uh, 5G network in the world, this is with Verizon. We're at a very large scale, we started this deployment uh, in late uh, 2019, the first site, and then through 2020 to 2022, we basically rolled in large scale. We have a lot of experience and learning from it, which what we brought into the table when we partnered with Dell. A lot of experience yep. from how you deploy at scale, many sites from a central location, updates, upgrade, so the whole day to operation, and this is coming to bear in the solution that basically Vodafone is deploying now, and which allow them, if I, I look at my engagement with Verizon started years before we started, and it took quite some time until we got stuff running. And if you look at the Vodafone time schedule was significantly compressed compared to the Verizon first deployment. And I can tell you that there are other service providers that were announced here, like KDDI, for example, it's another one moving even faster. So it's accelerating the whole movement to Aura. Yep. We've, we've heard a lot of acceleration talk this week. I'd love to get your perspective, Abdullah, Talking about, you know, you, you just mentioned two huge names in telco, Vodafone and Verizon. Talk a little bit about Dell's commitment to helping telecommunications companies really advance, accelerate innovation so that all of us on the other end have this thing that just works wherever we are 24 by seven. No, exactly, and this we go back to the challenges in open equity system. Managing multiple vendors at the same time is a challenge for our customers, and that's why we are trying to simplify their life cycle by being a trusted partner, working with our customers through all the journey. We started with Dish in their 5G deployment, also with Vodafone. We're finding the right partners, working with them proactively before getting into in front of the customer. To we've done our homework, 
we are ready to simplify the process for you to go for it. If you look at the RAN in particular, we are talking with the 5G, we have RAN densification, but I still have on the other side limited resources and skill set can support it. So bringing a, a pro uh, ahead of time engineer system with a zero touch provisioning enablement and sustainable life cycle management, it lead to the faster time to market deployment, TCO savings, improved margin for our customers and faster business revenue for their end users. Solid outcomes. And, yeah. and what you just, just, just described justifies the pain associated with disaggregating and reintegrating, which is the way that uh, Gil referenced it, which I think is great because you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're not re-aggregating, <laughs> you're reintegrating and you're creating something that's better exactly. moving forward. Otherwise, why would you do it? I, exactly, and if you look at it, the player in the ecosystem, you have the vendors, you have the service integrators, you have the automation enablers, but kind of they are talking in silos. Everyone, this is my RACI, this is what I'm responsible for, I, I'm not able, I, I don't want to get into something else. While we are going the extra mile by working proactively in that ecosystem to let's, let's bring brains together, find out what's one plus one can bring three for our customers, so we make it end-to-end -end seamless experience, not only on the technical part, but also on the business aspect side of it. So, so the partnership, it's about reducing the pain, I would say eliminating it, yeah. okay? So this is the, the core of it. And you mentioned getting better coverage for your phone. I do want to point out that the phones are great, but if you look at the premises of a 5G network, it's to enable a lot more things that will touch your life that are beyond the consumer and the phone. Stuff like connected vehicles. So for example, something as simple as collision avoidance. Okay, the ability for the car that goes in front of you to be able to see what's happening and broadcast this information to the car behind that have no ability to see it and basically affect our life in a way that makes our driving safer. And for this, you need a ultra low, reliable, low latency communication. You need a 5G network. I'm glad you brought that up because you know we think about, well, we just have to be connected all the time, but those are some of the emerging technologies that are just going to be potentially life-saving and, and really life-transforming that you guys are helping to enable. So really great stuff there, but so much promise coming down the road. What's next for Dell and Wind River? And, and when you're in conversations with prospective CSPs, what is the superpower that you deliver together? I'd love to get both of your perspectives. So if you look at it, number one, customers look at it, that's savings and their day-to-day -day operation. In 5G nature, we are talking the introduction of Oran, this is still picking up, but there is the maturization and densification of Oran. And this is where we're talking, I'm monetizing my deployment. Then the third phase, we are talking sustainability and advanced service introduction, where I want to move not only Oran, I want to bring the edge at the same side, I want to define the advanced use cases of edge where it enables me with this pre-work being done to deliver more services and better SLA services. By end of the day, 5G, as Gail mentioned earlier, it's not about a good, better phone coverage or better speed throughput, but what customized SLAs I can deliver so it enables me to deliver different business streams to my end users. Yeah. So yeah, I would say there are two pens. Uh, one, it's the technology side. So for an example, energy efficiency, it's a very big pain point, uh, sustainability. So we work a lot around this and the basically to advance this. Um, so if you look at the integrated solution today, it's very highly optimized for resource consumption, but to be able to more dynamically be able to change your power profile without compromising the SLA. So this is one side. The other side, it's about all those applications that will come to the 5G network to make our life better. It's about integrating, validating, certifying those applications. So it's not just easy to deploy an ORN network, but it's easy to deploy those applications. I'd be curious to get your perspective on the question of ROI in this, in this space, specifically with the sort of the macro headwinds <clears throat> the economies of the world are facing right now, yeah. if you accept that. Um, what does the ROI timeline look like when you're talking about moving towards ORAN, adopting VRAN, an amazing, you know, a plethora of new services that can be delivered, but will these operators have the appetite to take that, make that investment and take on that risk 
based upon the ROI time horizon. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, so if you look at the early days of uh, Oran introduction in particular, uh, most of the entrepreneurs of Oran and Virtual Oran ran into the challenges of not only the complexity of open ecosystem, but the integration, it's like the redos of the work. And that's where we are trying to address it via pre-engineer system or uh, building an engineer system proactively before getting it to the customers. Per, per our results or outcomes we get, we, we are talking about 30 to 50% savings on the OPEX. We are talking 110 ROI for our customers, simply because we are reducing the redos, the time spent to discover and explore, because we've done that rework ahead of time. We found the optimization issues, just for example, any customer can buy the same components from any multiple vendors, but how I can bring them together and get deliver for me the best performance that I can fully utilize, that's, that's where it brings the value for our customer, and it, it accelerate the deployment and uh, the operation of the uh, network. Gil, anything to add before we close in the next 30 yeah, seconds? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I would say we start to see the data coming from two years of operation at scale, and the data supports performance, it's the same or better than traditional system, and the cost of operation, it's as good or better than traditional. Unfortunately, I can't provide more specific data, but the point is, when something is unknown at the beginning, of course you're more afraid, you take more conservative approach. Now the data starts to flow, and from here, the intention is to go even better. So more efficiency, so cost less than traditional system, both to operate as well as to build up. But it's definitely the data that we have today says the, the, the Oran system is at par at the minimum. So definite ROI there. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me talking you. about how you're helping organizations not just address the complexities of moving from closed to open, but to your point, eliminating them. We appreciate your time and, and your insights. Thank you. Thank All right. You for our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live and emerging tech coverage, live from MWC 23. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs>